Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in this video, I want to answer a question that was posed to me recently by a customer who wanted to know how do I calculate the total finished surface area, not just the total area. And so I wanted to give it a little bit of thought because I've done this in the past where if I click on a surface and I switch it to a particular appearance, I can cycle through all those surfaces and you know, I'll find the ones that have the appearance that I want. But then I thought, is there a way to make it maybe more efficient and more generic? So instead of having to know the exact appearance that we're looking for, what if I just wanted to collect maybe all the exterior finishes? So all the surfaces that are going to get finished to the exterior color, doesn't really matter what the color is. I thought maybe it'd be better just to capture those. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to create a generic collection of surfaces that we can designate as like interior or exterior. I'm gonna be generic today and just say finished surfaces. So I'm gonna do that by using some surface modeling and some eye logic. So the first thing is we have to identify which surfaces we want to have a finish. So I've got this, uh, we'll pretend it's like a box cover or maybe a sign or something. So we've got all these surfaces on the interior that I don't want to get a finish. But then I've got these surfaces here, like this one, and then the three edges that I do want to get a finish. So I'm going to capture those surfaces and then stitch them together. I like to use the thicken offset for this type of operation because I can now designate it as a surface. And then <clears throat> I can select the face that I want. But I don't want it to be offset. I want to capture the exact value. So I'm going to create a zero offset surface and then hit apply. And I'm just going to systematically kind of work along setting all of these to be zero offset surfaces. Cool. So now that we've got our surfaces set up, I'm going to stitch them together. So the reason I like to use the stitch command is because I can edit it later. If I goofed and I picked a surface I wasn't supposed to, if uh, I need to add a surface, it's a collection of surfaces and I just shift clicked in the browser, I hit apply. Now it's all one surface. And so that's, yeah, that's it. And so you could name this whatever you want. I'm gonna call this finish surfaces. And that's what I'm using in my iLogic rule, which you'll see in a second. So that's kind of the first big step is to identify which surfaces you want. And then <clears throat> if we go to the iLogic, I've already written the rule, but I'll walk you through what it does. And in essence, it's going to create a parameter that stores the surface area after it cycles through all of those surfaces, and it should export it as a parameter. So let's take a look at what the rule does. So starting at the top, pretty generic -y type stuff. I'm using this document so that I could use this as an external rule if I wanted to. I'm grabbing the component definition because we're going to look for some features. And then I'm creating a surface area variable internally only, and I'm setting its initial value to zero. So again, pretty standard -y type stuff. So then we need to find if we have that finish surfaces, and this is what I'm using for the video. And we're looking for the knit feature. So the stitch feature in the API is called a knit feature. So what I'm going to do is I'm cycling through every feature in the component definition group of features. And if it is a knit feature, great. But it also has to be named whatever I'm looking for. So in this case, I'm looking for the finished surfaces. So I'm looking for an and. If it meets that criteria, then I'm going to add all those faces. I'm going to search each face, sorry, within that knit object, and I'm going to grab the area. That's the surface evaluator function from each face. And I'm using a little bit of logger info. It's up to you, but I, I get to know each individual area. So that way you could use the actual measure command and verify. Yep, I, I didn't miss something. And then it also is going to give me the cumulative run of the areas. Cool. So there's that. And then once we have a value, what do we do with it? So right now I've got it as a surface area, but it's in inside of Inventor, it always calculates things using centimeter units. So just if I wanted to, I'm creating a surface area inch variable, 
which is simply the surface area. And I didn't get cute. I just divided it by 2.54 times 2.54 because it's, you know, square centimeters. So just did it that way and then reporting that as well. So once we've got that, now I want to report it as a user parameter and as an I property because then we can utilize <clears throat> maybe it in the bill of materials or we can cycle through all the components in an assembly and collect all of these parameter values, etc. So that's the way I wanted to do it. So I'm gonna grab the user parameters and there's kind of an interesting thing. What if I don't have any? So I also wanted to see if there weren't any user parameters. Well, let's create it. So I'm going to create this finished surface area parameter. I'm going to set it to the centimeter value. And I'm going to give it the inch inch unit type. So it's inches by inches. And that's just for my got from the API help. Cool. And then I want it to be exposed as an I property. So I'm going to set it's exposed as property is true. So that's awesome. But what if we already have some? No big deal. I'm going to cycle through all the user parameters. And if I find one, name the surface area. Well, that's where I'm going to just say, well, it's equal to the surface area inch value because I've probably already created the area and set it to square inches. So that's what I'm going to do here. Of course, I should quickly state if you wanted it to be in square millimeters or something else, you could totally do that. We would just do different calculations up here, right? If you wanted millimeters instead of centimeters, you know, it'd be multiplying by 10 or whatever. So stuff like that. And then if we do cycle through all the user parameters and we don't find this finished surface area, well, we're just going to make it. So that's basically the rule. So if I hit save and run, you'll see that it cycled through all of the sizes and it gave me the individual, cumulative, the individual, cumulative, etc. And it also made the surface area parameter. Set to exposed, so it should also be a custom I property. So that's a, a methodology for consistently getting the surface area without having to measure it yourself each time with an accumulate. And like I said, if we make it as a stitch surface, we could edit that for future use as well. Hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and have a blessed day.